Alright guys, it's Charbox Reviews, coming at you guys with The Terror, Season 1, Episode 9, Review. Alright, so it's the second last episode of Season 1. Um, I'm pretty sure we haven't heard anything about, um, you know, possible uh, future seasons or whatever. It's kind of just a, a limited kind of time series here with 10 episodes. Um, but of course, we'll go from there. I mean, you know, lately... There's been a lot of uh, a lot of shows that have kind of had like a, a season one. They said it's only a season one. Yeah, it's a limited time, and then they go ahead with a season two just because of how popular it's uh, become. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of those shows. But anyways, uh, I really enjoyed this episode. Uh, I thought it was a little bit of a slower pace this week, um, especially compared to like the chaotic uh, end to last episode, right? Like that was just, you know, really, really crazy. Um the last seven to eight minutes of that episode, and then, you know, then we get this episode that's kind of like the aftermath of it a little bit, um, of course, we, uh, we suffer some pretty big losses in this episode, I have to say, um, I mean, if you look back to the beginning of episode one, um, I mean, there's not that many people left, I mean, Francis is pretty much one of the only main guys left, him and Hickey, uh, you know, and I don't even think we, I don't even think we see Hickey in episode one, so, you know, and, uh, you know, that's kind of uh, the reality right now. Oh, and Good Sir, Good Sir's there as well. So we got Good Sir Francis and Hickey, um, and that's pretty much the main the main guys from uh, the beginning of the series that are still around right now. So uh, and you notice how I didn't include Fitz James. So that was a uh, you know he uh, he uh, you know was was kind of put down I guess in this episode. Uh, but of course I'll talk about that a uh, little bit more. So we're gonna go over a recap here as usual, and then get to my rating, favorite character, and then some more overall thoughts of the episode just to kind of recap everything right. Um, and also, I'd just like to apologize for this one being so late. Um, you know, some people are like, well, why, why do you still do the review if, you know, <laughs> you're like almost a week late at this point? And I'm like, well, I, I don't know. I just like to have a full collection of it. So if people are going back watching the series, they can say, oh, um, you know, oh, there's no episode nine review or recap or whatever, right? So then they, they kind of have a chance to go through all of them. Um, and I just like to have that full collection of the whole season instead of, you know, missing one episode here, one episode there, so that's why I'm doing it here, um, and I recognize, you know, it's a little bit outdated, so, you know, maybe, uh, not as many people will be, you know, tuning into the review, uh, but I'm really excited for the finale, um, tomorrow, so today's Sunday, but, uh, tomorrow I'm really excited for this finale, I'm gonna try to watch it live if I, uh, you know, if I have the time, um, and see it, uh, but, uh, but the review should be at Wednesday, I think, for it, um, so look out for that, uh, as well, so, yeah, I really enjoyed this series, um, this has been a standout for me this spring, um, a little bit unexpected, honestly, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not, and, uh, I've just kind of fell in love with this show, I think it's awesome, so, anyways, um, yeah, so let's get into the recap now of episode 9, the second last episode, and by the way, this episode was, like, really long, it was about, like, 57 minutes, I think, um, on AMC, so it was a little bit, uh, strange to me, actually, I did not expect that, you know, to be that long, um, but AMC's really going all out with this series and uh, and really giving it the time it deserves. So really awesome stuff there. So we start out with Lady Jane, of course, Sir John's wife, uh, back in England, right? So she's talking to some people about a safety mission, right? She needs money and she needs people to contribute to this mission to hopefully find her husband and the other crew members that have mysteriously vanished, right? So uh, we heard, I think, I think this was like two or three episodes ago, um, when she was talking to some of the men who were kind of in charge of the uh, the whole uh, expedition um, and sending them. And then they said, you know, to her, oh, well, they vanished. We don't even know who, you know, where they are. And they didn't seem too concerned. So I think Lady Jane is kind of taking it to her own hands here and saying, okay, well, if you guys aren't going to do anything, I'm going to get together this mission and we're going to go, you know, save my husband. Um, but of course, the tragic uh, kind of ironic thing about this is that her husband has been dead for quite a while, right? So he died pretty early on um, in episode three for us. But I mean, like just months into the expedition, I think, or maybe a year, right? But it's been a long time since then. So, you know, she obviously doesn't know that, um, and there's not much crew left either. So her trying to, you know, get this safety mission going, um, you know, kind of ironic because there's nothing, there's no one really to save left, right? There's not many people left, and uh, her husband is definitely, uh, you know, not not going to be saved uh, because he, he died, right? So anyways... I just thought that was an interesting start to the episode, and then we get the intro playing there. And then we see the aftermath of the uh, Toombok attack on the camp, or the monster there. Um, really, just, just I mean, tragic. I mean, just to see everything that happened, and then they show um, a guy with, like, uh, his head basically, like, chopped off. He has, like, his, the jaw is still there, but the rest of his head is gone. So, 
Really gruesome sights here um, in Fitzjames. Tells Francis that they have 32 dead, and I think it was like 23 or 24 uh, missing. So they, they just they can't identify the other 24. They don't know where they are. Um, so to say, I mean, they, they lost 50 people from that Toonbok attack. Um, just crazy, right? And then you also got to keep in mind that Hickey, I mean, I'm not exactly sure how many men are traveling with them. I would guess probably like a dozen, about a dozen uh, would probably be with Hickey. So keep in mind that a dozen then left as well. So you lost about 60 men within, you know, that, that night, right, of this big Toonbok attack. Um, so that's... That's a substantial number of the crew that are just gone now, right? And uh, and I think they're like they only have about twenty to thirty people, uh, thirty men left with Francis um, and Fitzjames leading them. I wouldn't I wouldn't even maybe say thirty. I think it's less than thirty now are left. So we really only have about I would say max maximum fifty men that are still left alive at this point in the uh, in the show. So you know. Um, so then Francis says, kind of gets the gets the men together, and he says, "We set a sail three years ago with 133 men aboard. That's crazy, right? And they've just lost almost 60 in the last night. So you know, really crazy stuff here." And he says, "I couldn't imagine such grief would come to us, but now we have no choice but to carry it with us as we go to bring home the names of our dead." And then he says, "We march south." Right, so he's giving the men hope here, if that's at all possible at this point. I mean, you know, it's tough to understand how you know any of them could have any hope left. But Francis is still trying to give them hope and still trying to be a good leader at this point. Um, and so they burn the bodies of the men who died, and they set off marching south, um, you know, to uh, to hopefully find safety and obviously you know get back to uh, to England. So really. You know, just a kind of an emotional moment, actually, for Francis, you know, still being able, still having the strength to being able to, to say that and be kind of the 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 hope, right? The hope that the men still need uh, going forward in this uh, expedition because they're not done yet, right? They haven't got the safety yet, and they still got, I think, a while to go um, because I think one of Hickey's men in the episode said they're only a quarter of the way to where they wanted to be, Um and so, and I mean, it's already been like, it's been months, I think, have passed since they've been on, you know, just walking uh, off the ships, right? So, I mean, you know, they got a long way to go, I think, still. So then we see this part, uh, sorry, excuse me. We see this part in the episode uh, with Fitz James. So this was a little, uh, you know, this was obviously an emotional part to the episode here. Um, I don't know. I thought this was a little sudden, to be honest. <laughs> Because, yes, we did see those bullet uh, wounds last episode, and we knew that he was, like, in, you know, some sort of pain, right? Or, you know, probably significant pain, right? So he was he was suffering a little bit from those. Um, but in this episode, I just felt like it was really, really, you know, expedited. Um, you know, just, just the, you know, how fast he just totally flipped from being, you know, able to walk and being healthy to, okay, no, he needs to be put down because he's, you know, he's in a lot of pain and he's going to die. So I just felt like it was a little sudden in this episode. Um, maybe maybe that's just me. I don't know. But I just felt like it was kind of sudden after we literally only saw those bullet wounds for the first time last episode. And before that, we thought he was perfectly fine just like all the other men. Um, turns out, though, that he's not. So, you know, um, obviously. So he falls down as the men are marching here. And they don't, make, like, they don't march too far. And then he's already, like, falling down and he's not feeling well. Right, so we find out that the bullet wounds were from six years ago. So that's what he says. I thought it was maybe from um, episode six, uh, where uh, where Mr. Morphin uh, shot him, but that just shot the lantern. I was confused, but yeah, so six years ago. So he's been kind of suffering from those for six years with the pain, and now I guess the pain has just gotten worse and worse and worse with walking and not, you know, eating properly and all this stuff. Right? I mean, you, you know, you totally understand why. You know, any of these men would be in pain um, or would be dying, right? So you see the conditions are wearing on him a lot, right? And uh, as they go on, he's just getting worse and worse, right? So they stop the, the kind of the convoy, I would say. They stop the group again because he's, you know, screaming and yelping, you know, out of pain, right? As he's riding in that boat because they're hitting rocks and, it, you know, it just keeps hitting him again. And then he's in more pain, right? So they, they end up setting up camp there and then he lies in the tent with uh, the doctor, Right, so he's kind of serving as the doctor, and this was interesting too. I'm not going to include this in the recap just because I thought it was kind of a throwaway scene personally, but it might be something bigger. Is that that this doctor? I think his name is John. Um, the doctor. I mean, at the very end of the episode, there he like goes into the rocks by himself and just lays there and presumably like dies. So I'm not exactly sure what he was doing there. 
or maybe he is coming back. Maybe he's just like going out there for you know a, a few hours or something, and just like laying there and thinking about life or something. I'm not exactly sure what was going on there, uh, but that's definitely mysterious too. And then we saw um, the Francis's. Uh, I kind of like want to be wife, I guess. Uh, so she was. Then she took her uh, her shoes off and like stood in the snow um, at the very end of the episode too. So uh, two kind of interesting scenes there. Uh, but yeah, so that's where I'll talk about them, and that's about the extent. Um, so anyway, so he's in this tent with the doctor, and he asks Francis to help him out of his situation at this point uh, to kill him. Right? He says, you know, help me. I think he says, help me, right? Like, that, that's that's all he says. He says, help me, you know, it's, it's that, it's like the pain is that bad, right? It, it is that bad and that he's probably not going to uh, come through this and he's not going to survive. Um, and he says his body is failing him, right? So, really emotional scene here and, uh, you know, the doctor gives Francis a uh, some sort of poisonous liquid uh, to give to Fitzjames um, because... You know, that's just, you know, easier than, you know, shooting Fitzjames or, you know, stabbing him to death or something like that. Um, you know, just, just kind of putting him down, you know, peacefully um, in a way. And then that will, you know, kill him, obviously, pretty quickly, too. Um, but before the doctor leaves, he said it was a pleasure to serve him. And this was just very emotional, um, you know, to hear that from the uh, the doctor guy. Um, and uh, I bet, you know, all the crew members would say that, right? It was a pleasure to serve Fitzjames. And he was... You know, I would say more or less a great leader. I think at times, yes, you know, he had his moments that he was, you know, kind of jumping on things. But when Francis was uh, down and out and Fitzjames was the leader of the expedition, I think he did an amazing job. And he was really, you know, relatable to the men and all that. So, I mean, I don't doubt that a lot of the men uh, would think it was a pleasure serving him. So, very emotional scene there. Francis gives him the liquid and uh, he has to force it down his throat because, you know, the um, I think he said his reflexes would refuse it. So he had to kind of force it down his throat. And uh, and that is that is the end for Fitzjames. He dies. So uh, the next day they bury his body. Right. And that, again, was emotional. We saw in the boot, it said, uh, you know, J.F., right? James Fitzjames. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like they could have made this death a little bit bigger. It happened, like, really quickly into the episode here. I didn't think they focused on it enough because Fitzjames is, like, the third main character in the in the series, I would say. Um, and uh, it just didn't seem like they focused on it enough for my liking. Uh, but, you know, maybe that's just symbolizing the times of, like, okay, well, one of the you know, top guys, the commanding officers died. Well, we have to move on, right? That's the that's the conditions that they're in. That's the situation that they're in. So maybe it's symbolizing that a little bit, uh, but I still think it was just a little bit too quick. I mean, this all happened in about like two or three minutes and then he was dead and they were burying his body. Um, it, sorry, like from him in the tent, right? So it was really kind of a quick thing. Uh, but anyway, so then if things couldn't get any worse for Francis at this point, then this is even more emotional. Blanky reveals to Francis that his temporary leg is not working anymore and that his upper thigh where they where they cut it is becoming infected. And it, it really did not look good, right? It did not look good. Um, and he's also not feeling well, too. He's, he's quite unwell. Um, so Blanky, I mean, Blanky and Fitzjames, pretty much his two closest guys at this point that he likes and that are his friends. Uh, Blanky probably even more than Fitzjames at this point are now, you know, going away. They're, they're both dying, and, uh, you know, and, and it's really rough on Francis. He says, you know, are you kidding me, right? And he's, he's kind of angry, but he's also very upset too, right, uh, that both of his friends are, you know, kind of going now. So, uh, Blanky, though, this is just the kind of guy he is, right? So he suggests that he leads the Toombok out onto the ice so the other men will be safe again and so the Toombok won't, you know, constantly be tracking them. Um, just a really, you know, selfless act for Blanky. I mean, he knows that he's going to die soon anyways. He can't travel with the crew because he can barely walk now with his, uh, you know, thigh and the, the temporary leg and whatever. Um, so Francis leaves him to go off uh, on his own and uh, eventually die, right? You know, Blanky's not going to be coming back. He is going to um, perish whether the Toombot gets him or not. You know, he's, he's, he's basically going to die and he's, you know, acknowledged that fact. And I think Francis knows it too. So Francis lets him go and it was very emotional, you know, seeing Francis kind of uh, look away. Uh, like look at him and they look at each other and then Blanky goes this way and Francis goes this way with the rest of the men um, and uh, just kind of an emotional scene there so yeah so Francis loses Fitzjames and Blanky within about five to six minutes of the screen uh, screen time here uh, so really a kind of a tough tough moment there uh, for Francis and of course we see a little bit more with Blanky later so then we get to Hickey's part here so the lieutenant uh, so the lieutenant is named Lieutenant Hutchison I didn't know that until this episode but uh, the guy was sort of like the blonde hair and the blonde beard 
So he finds Hickey and his crew. Uh, so that was interesting. He actually like ate a part of his boot right before he found Hickey. So he was obviously struggling. So he comes back with them to their camp. You know, obviously, um, so he's joins it's kind of the crew as well. And Good Sir is also with them. So this is important, too. I didn't even realize that last episode that they took Good Sir with them. Um, I don't know. Maybe that was obvious, but I actually had no idea. So Good Sir is with them, and that's kind of an important part right here uh, for this episode. So Billy comes to Good Sir, uh, and Billy, of course, is, you know, Hickey's kind of ex-boyfriend or ex-partner, I guess. And he tells him that he's developing the condition as well. He's feeling really weak, right? His knees feel like glass and stuff like that. So this lead disease is also getting to him. And he's looking very unwell. I mean, he's not looking good at all. Uh, so then Hickey visits him, right? So he comes into the tent too. And he, he's like, oh, you know, stay calm. You know, we're, we're going to get through this and all that stuff. But then he goes and gets his knife from his tent and just suddenly walks in and stabs Billy in the back and uh, essentially puts him down right but i mean not quite yet right like it was a really early kind of um you know put down you know what i mean like hickey just wasn't really thinking at all he didn't even hesitate he goes gets his knife and just stabs him and kills billy right there and then and i mean billy used to be like his ex-boyfriend or his ex-partner here i mean like for him to be able to do that with no you know hesitation no emotions um just insane right he just stabs him in the back kills him and that's that. And, it, and we see Goods are very, very, you know, kind of shaken up at that. And he's just really, you know, not okay with it, right? So that was a big scene there. And I mean, to be realistic, though, Billy was not going to was not gonna live, right? He has this disease. They don't have a cure for it. So he's going to die, right? So, I mean, Hickey putting him down early like this so he doesn't have to feel the pain. You know, you kind of get it. If it was anyone but Hickey, you may understand it a little bit more. But we obviously know that Hickey's kind of a murderous psychopath. Um, so, uh, you know, for him to do it, it just seemed like, you know, really, uh, you know, kind of uncalled for, right? So then this was a really tough part in the episode to watch, actually, um, uh, even though we actually don't see Good Sir, you know, chop Billy up or whatever, um, but to just, you know, kind of feel for Good Sir in this, in this episode, um, or in this sequence, especially what they've built up all this time so far, um, you know, and, and us, you know, having sympathy for Good Sir, this was, this was rough, right? So Hickey wants Good Sir to butcher Billy, so that the men can eat him after uh, Hickey killed him, of course, right? So Hickey's basically killing him for food um, at this point. And my, but my question is, like, wouldn't that wouldn't his meat be like kind of tainted, right? Like, wouldn't that be like, uh, you know, like wouldn't that be infected as well if he has this disease? So I don't know. I, I just like I don't I don't know about that. Maybe that's just like I, I just think that the men would think that even if that's not true. I don't know why the men wouldn't even like would that wouldn't even cross their mind, but. Anyways, so good for good sir refuses, of course. He's been the moral kind of compass the whole series, and here he shows it again, right? So he refuses him and tells him that he will have to do it himself. He's not going to be doing that, and he doesn't want to be, you know, have any part in it. But then Hickey threatens, right? So he threatens him to kill the other man, uh, which is uh, Hutchison, to kill him if he doesn't do what Hickey is asking, right? And I really like this uh, quote here from Hickey, and he says, don't indulge your morals over your practicals. Not now. Don't you also want to live? So I, I, you know, I feel like, you know, Hickey's obviously the villain kind of at this point. He's, you know, uh, um, you know, kind of past the point of no return. He's a, he's a really, you know, bad guy, right? But I still see where he's kind of coming from at this point because he's saying, you know, don't indulge your morals over your practicals. Don't, you know, let your morals take over uh, when, you know, at this point we kind of have to eat him or we will die. And then he says, don't you also want to live? So Hickey sees this as the only way that they are going to live and that they're going to, you know, continue to survive. Um, now, that's a little flawed, of course, right? I mean, there's definitely probably other possibilities that they could do. Um, but, you know, that's what he thinks. That's He thinks this is the only way. Um, so he's given the uh, good sir the ultimate choice at this point, right? Either get another man killed or butcher this this guy, uh, which are both things that are definitely wrong. And good sir is not okay with really either of them. So good sir in the end is forced to cut Billy up as they threaten Lieutenant Hutchison. Uh, so, you know, he, he makes the decision that he's going to butcher him as, uh, as Hickey asks. So he cuts him up and uh, brings the men uh, the meat in a couple of the bags. And uh, it's just a very chilling moment just seeing this. And then they're all around the kind of picnic table that they set up there. And they're, they're eating Billy, right? So they've turned into cannibalists 
to survive. It's kind of official now. They've actually done it. They've actually eaten them um, and, uh, you know, and eaten this human meat to, uh, to survive. So, and it was just, a, I don't know, it was just a really chilling moment. I mean, all the men are kind of like, even Tozier, who's kind of like Hickey's right-hand man sort of thing, he's like, you know, not really liking it. He's, he thinks it's not okay. And then you just see Hickey at the end of the table, and he's like smiling, and he's, you know, loving it. And it's like, okay, you know, this guy actually does, you know, have some problems, obviously. So, anyways, a very, very uh, chilling moment there in the episode. So then we see Blanky. Um, so this was an interesting scene. Now, I don't fully understand this scene. Um, maybe if you if you kind of understood it a little bit more, um, if you could, you know, tell me that for sure. But, um, yeah, so I, I was a little bit confused. But basically, we see Blanky, and he's looking out over the ice. So he's kind of on this cliff, right? And he's kind of looking out over the ice. And he sees this kind of cavern in the distance. But he sees, like, a kind of a, a passage between these, you know, two kind of caverns. So he gets out his map. Right, and he sees on the map here this uh, kind of unmarked territory here, and all of a sudden he takes you know uh, his uh, his pen or I guess it's his pencil or whatever, and he writes down Northwest Passage on his map in the spot where he's looking at where he sees it right there. So I'm just like, did he actually just find the passage, or is he just going mad? And I think it's the second one, right? <clears throat> I think he's he's either making something up here. Or, you know, he's just gone crazy and actually thinks it. Uh, because I don't like, I don't think there was, they, they never found the Northwest Passage on this expedition, of course. So, I don't know. I, I just, maybe, maybe I'm not understanding it, like I said at the beginning. I, I don't know. Um, but to me, I just think that was kind of like him going mad and him kind of confusing things and, you know, thinking that he found the passage when he really didn't. Um, so, I'm not sure. <clears throat> I'm not sure which one it is, right? I'm, I'm really not. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so that was just kind of an interesting scene there. Um, again, may have been a throwaway scene, but, uh, but I thought I'd mention it. So then we see Trozier. So things are already happening within Hickey's camp here. Um, Trozier and some of the other men, um, or sorry. So first we'll start with Trozier. Uh, but basically they're trying to tell Hickey something else and he doesn't agree with them. And then a couple of the men were like suggesting a mutiny again. And Trozier's like, you know, we're not having another mutiny after what we just had with Francis, right? Uh, so that was kind of a little funny of a scene there. But anyways, so Trozier tells Hickey about what he saw the tune back do to Mr. Collins last episode. So this was a uh, kind of a chilling scene as well to hear Trozier kind of recount what he saw. Um, and, and we know what he saw last episode, right? So he says, I saw Mr. Collins's soul and I know what it was. And I watched that creature ingest it like feed on it. It breathed that man's soul in. And that's exactly what it looked like last episode, right? So. Trozier's telling the truth here. Now, whether Hickey believes him or not, another story, right? Whether anyone would believe him or not is another story. Um, but, yeah, Trozier, we see him. He's, like, kind of haunted by this um, sight that he saw, right? And he's, like, still trying to recover. He's struggling with this because he knows, I mean, not many other people are going to believe him, but he knows what he saw, right? And, uh, you know, and, and maybe he may even think he was hallucinating or something, too. I don't know. Um, but he definitely saw this for himself. And, it, you know, just a horrifying sight for him as well. So he says uh, that they don't want to face the Toombok again because they cannot beat it, right? If it's like sucking souls in or whatever, they cannot beat this thing, right? Uh, so Trozier wants them to make their way back to the ships uh, at sea and abandon Francis's group altogether, right? Just leave them be, whatever, we're going to move on to the ships and we're going to... I don't know exactly why they want to go back to the ships, by the way. I think they have a better chance of getting rescued on the island that they're at rather than where they are in the ships, but I don't know. And and is the crew on the ship still alive at this point? I don't know. I doubt it. Uh, I don't know, but maybe. And they also have quite a bit of food, I think, left on the ships as well, so you got to keep that in mind. So maybe that's why. But anyway, so Hickey doesn't agree with it. He doesn't want to go, you know, back to the ships, and, uh, you know, he doesn't really trust what Trozier is saying at this point. And then that's where you get that scene a little bit later on, where Hickey's on the top of the hill there, and then a couple of men are, you know, saying, oh, it's another mutiny or whatever. Um, which is true. I mean, I, I think Hickey's already losing his kind of power over the group right now. I mean, there's, you know, a few of them, right, that would that would probably kill, you know, someone who killed him. Um, but, I mean, if Trozier and these guys are going to do something, I mean, Hickey can't do anything. They can easily kill him, right? But, anyways, so that's uh, very interesting to see going forward. I think that's going to play a big part in what's going to happen next episode. So, the boy then, um, so, this boy, like, they gave him a lot of power. 
um, like Francis and the group there. So they set up camp again, right? And they're near Hickey's camp. So Hickey, uh, you know, they talk about being near Francis's camp throughout the episode here. Um, and they give this boy, like, he seemed like a really young boy. Um, like, I don't know, like 17 or 18. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, so they give this, the boy, like, so much power. Like, he's out with hunting parties and, like, out on search parties and stuff like this. And, uh, and he has a gun. Like, it seems like he has a lot of power here. And it wasn't a big surprise to me when this happened, when he betrayed Francis and, like, went with others. So, I don't know exactly why they would give him so much power and, like, let him go out on his own and stuff like this with his search parties. But, anyways, like, he wasn't one of the trusted guys. So, I, I don't know. But, anyways, it kind of backfires, of course, on Francis. Uh, so, the boy tells Francis that he has found a passage through the ice to basically lure him out of the camp. And, you know, get him, you know, in, in a in a kind of like the middle of nowhere place, right, where no one else can kind of find them. Um, and suddenly, they're ambushed by some of Hickey's men who want to take Francis back to Hickey. And, of course, the boy was working with them in getting, you know, Francis out there. Now, I don't doubt that they threatened the boy, right, and that he was kind of forced to do what he did. I don't think he just, you know out and out just wanted to be with Hickey's team and, you know, did something for them. No, I think they forced him to do it, of course. They threatened him, probably. But still, I mean, he did do it. He's, you know, responsible. But anyways, um, so that's what they want to do, right? So the, the men all, they want to take Francis back to Hickey. So I'm, I'm guessing so that Hickey can get his revenge on him because obviously he still doesn't like Francis. So one of the men then gets shot by one of Hickey's guys. Um, and that was, I don't know, that was just a really, you know, kind of bleak and, and really dark moment there. Um, where one of the men just shoots him right off the bat. And I think he just yells something. He yells his name and then just shoots him um, and he dies. So, and then we see Francis, you know, uh, talking to him as he's, you know, in his last breaths there. Um, and that was very emotional too. Francis still being there for his men, right? You know, recognizing that. So, yeah. So then we see that Francis just agrees to go with Hickey. Uh, right, he, or sorry, Hickey's men, right, um, you know, he just agrees to it, he doesn't want anything else to happen at this point, he doesn't want Mr. Little or the other men to fire at Hickey's men, he doesn't want a big battle here, he just, he says, okay, I'll go with them, right, so, uh, he says, you know, I'll go with them, but don't harm the other men, right, so that's kind of like the deal that he strikes here, and then he tells Lieutenant Little, who's become a big character, by the way, in like the last three episodes, he's became a huge, huge presence in the show, and before that, I didn't really even know he existed, um, but anyway, so he tells Lieutenant Little that he is now in charge of getting the men to safety and keeping them alive, and he says, we live, right, and in this point, in this scene, I have to say, I did kind of recognize something happening here, now, I'm not sure if Francis was, uh, kind of, like, passing a secret message to Little here and saying that, like, come find me, you know, sort of thing, that's what I thought was going on here, because they paused, like, kind of awkwardly for a little bit, and Francis kind of stared at him, and he stared back, and then he said, like, Rip, you know, let me hear, let me hear it, right? So, this may have been his kind of a secret message to let Little know to come after him and try to save him from these men. I don't know, maybe that's the case, but maybe it's not. Uh, maybe that's just something I noticed, but yeah, that I did notice that, so I'm not sure if that's, you know, something relevant or not. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so he hands off the, 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 uh, the reins to, uh, Little there, and I just thought it was, a, again, emotional scene here as Francis is saying goodbye to his loyal men, right? These men, you know, Hickey's men were his, you know, uh, his, his crew, but not loyal, right? They've kind of, disbanded from him uh, um, although I mean I think there's definitely three or four guys who there who actually appreciate Francis still but were kind of forced to come with Hickey and the men as they left um so yeah very emotional scene here and Francis kind of saying goodbye um and we'll have to see what happens to Francis I mean is Hickey gonna kill him uh is he gonna be saved right what's gonna happen here so that was a really great stuff there to kind of leave that off on a cliffhanger and then we see at the very end of the episode here, this was just a funny scene, uh, you know, probably one of the only humorous scenes in the whole episode here, but just a kind of a funny, you know, kind of, uh, you know, so what kind of scene here at the end. Uh, so we see Blank, he's sitting on the cliff, and he hears the Toonbok approaching from behind, and um, I think he actually says something worse than this, but uh, I'm just going to say, what in the hell took you so long? That's pretty much what he says. He says some other stuff, I think, um, <laughs> but uh, anyways... So, you know, what in the hell took you so long? And the man, you know, Bl Blanky is wrapped up in forks and rope, right? So, I think this is, like, so when the when the Toonbok bites into him, like, he gets stabbed by all these forks or whatever. So, just a funny little scene here at the very end of the episode. And that's the end, right? 
So Blank, he knows he's going to die. He accepts it, and uh, that's just the kind of guy he is. He's going out, you know, kind of uh, as a hero, and, you know, going out being tied up with forks, uh, you know, to uh, to hopefully get kind of his last, you know, last-ditch effort, uh, you know, to hurt this Toon Bok, um, you know, and, uh, and he knows that he's going to die at this point, too. So I think we all know that. So anyways, then that's the end of the episode there, so that'll just about do it for the recap. Alright, so in terms of rating for this episode, I'm going to give it a 4.6 out of 5. Um, again, I thought it was a little bit of a slower paced episode this week. Um, I think last week was kind of slower paced until the end, right? The end of the episode was just chaotic. I mean, chaos ensued, right? That last 6 to 7 minutes of the episode, and it was just really, really crazy, right? A very bleak theme throughout the episode here. Um, I mean, like I said, the only kind of comedic, upbeat scene was uh, kind of blanky at the very end of the episode there. Everything else was very bleak. I mean, we lost Fitz James. We lost, um, you know numerous men right from francis's group uh we lost billy uh who was you know killed and eaten right by uh by hickey and his men uh so yeah and then of course lady jane talking about launching a safety mission to, to save her husband at the very beginning and he's been dead for you know presumably a, a year and a half two years maybe even so just a really bleak episode here and that's just kind of you know summarizing what what's going on right now the situation that all these men are in um, and they do a really good job in kind of setting that realistic uh, kind of tone and uh, that theme in the um, in the series. So, you know, uh, you know, obviously, farewell to Fitz James, right? That was uh, one of the biggest, you know, deaths of the series so far. And uh, again, I thought they kind of rushed it a little bit. I thought it was a little bit expedited. Um, but I mean, still, you know, it was very meaningful and uh, very emotional as well. Um, and I thought it set up uh, for a really big finale episode. I thought this episode did a really great job with that. I mean, what's going to happen to Francis? What's going to happen with Trozier and Hickey? Is, is there going to be some kind of a revolt there, a mutiny again, right? Um, what is Goodsir going to do after, you know, what, you know, how is he going to live through this? Um, and all this stuff, is this safety mission actually going to happen? And are they going to be found, right? So there's a lot, a lot of questions uh, to be answered next episode. And it's the last episode, right? That's it. So hopefully, um, I, I'm hoping, I, I don't know that it's going to be a, a happy ending, but I hope it's at least kind of going to be a, a good ending in the way that they completely wrap things up and they don't really leave anything uh, as a mystery, right? They kind of wrap things up and keep everything, um, you know, and, and it kind of answer all the questions that we have. I really hope it's that kind of finale. I hope that they just don't, they don't leave it, you know, up to our imagination to see what happens next. I really hope they show us everything, and uh, I don't have a doubt that they will, uh, but some shows, you know, decide to go the other way, but anyways, I just really thought it set up things really, really well. Um, so my favorite character for this one is going to be James Fitz James, played by Tobias Menzies. Um, he did a really great job throughout the series, and if you look, I mean, just with every character in the series, honestly, I mean, you look at episode one, and then you look at episode nine, for the ones who are still left, of course, you know, not many, uh, but the ones who are still left, I mean, the, the changes that they went through, the transformations that they went through with the characters. I mean, the writers deserve a lot, a lot of credit for this. And so do the actors and actresses, um, mainly actors, I guess, who are part of the uh, the crew. But then you have a couple actresses uh, that are back in England, right? Uh, Sir John's wife and uh, Francis' kind of uh, ex-girlfriend or ex-wife there. Um, so, yeah, um, just a really, really, uh, you know, crazy, crazy transformation, especially for Fitz James. Um, I mean, Francis and him hated each other, and I think I talked a lot about this last episode. And then, you know, last episode, you get that scene where they bond, and they're actually, you know, really, really good friends at this point. Um, and uh, to see Francis kind of be the one to put James down in this episode, very emotional, right? So, uh, Tobias Menzies, like I said, he's, he did a great job in this series. Um, really awesome to have him for nine episodes. Um, I didn't I didn't expect he would be as big as a character as he was, you know, looking back at episode one, episode two. I didn't think he was going to be that big, but uh, he was definitely probably second biggest character in the series. Um, and to see him die in this episode was uh, was really, you know, it was impactful, right? Very impactful and very emotional. So, yeah. So, anyways, I'll just about do it then for the review of episode 9 of The Terror. Uh, thank you so much for watching this uh, review, of course. And thank you so much for the recent support on the channel. I really, really appreciate it. But, anyways, we'll see you uh, hopefully in the next couple days. It should be Tuesday or Wednesday that the review will be up for the finale. And that one may be a bit longer. I'd like to, you know, talk about the series as a whole and just talk a lot about that finale because I'm really looking forward to it. So, really excited. Hopefully, I'll be watching it live tomorrow. Um, and uh, and then uh, you know have the review up. But anyways, again, like I said, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next, uh, not next week, but next episode uh, for the Terror Season One Finale.